Howdy folks, rock the duck farm here, and let's talk Botania. Uh, specifically, let's talk about how to make a really tight, compact, self-shutting off uh, Botania setup that I really like, because there's a ton of things in Botania that I like to get, especially early game, and I'm looking at you, Ring of Magnetization, I love that thing. Uh, but let's show off what I've got here. So we back up real quick. Uh, we've got the Alfheim Gateway here with the trades you can do. We've got the Terra Steel um, production area here. Here's the mana producing spot. Uh, we've got eight Endo Flames with a source of fuel down below. Uh, we also have a Rosa Arcana for converting XP, you know, like just right there. Uh, the main pool for tossing in items like mana pearls and uh, iron to make a mana steel, all of that. And then down here, we've got nine mana pools that provides the, the battery for all the, the stuff that you want to do and a, a runic altar for making runes. And back here, the enchanter. I love this setup because it doesn't eat up books. I love that. And if we take a quick look down below, here's kind of some brains back here. Uh, this is what spits out the fuel. Uh, this is the where all the mana is going to and getting distributed from. And then this little doohickey here is what shuts it off so that you're not constantly spewing out fuel when everything's full. And you can see there's a little bit of uh, room there, still a little bit of leeway, which works out very, very nicely. So uh, that's it. It's super, super simple. Let's make one. So after that overview of how it's set up, Let's actually set it up and we can take a look at this barrel and uh, the screenshot here is provided so that you can take a little pause, look at everything that's needed. And if I haven't messed up, that's all of it. Uh, bottom row is junk blocks and optional bits. So let's go ahead and grab all these things. Grab, 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 grab. And I'll just leave that last little bit in there for when we need that. I do want, oh, got the limited right there. All right. All in one tool. Uh, I start off by finding that 15 by 15 area. And if you hit F3G, it shows you chunks. And uh, I lined it up with that corner and then I minus one and minus one uh, block on, on those two sides. So there's your 15 by 15. And so then I find where the center is. And then I hit F, you know, there, turn off the chunks again. So this is where I put my gateway. And I tend to, wrong one, wrong tool. I tend to do this with whatever wood I've got on hand uh, before, before I actually uh, have the, the living wood. And it really doesn't matter. I'm just marking out where things are going to go. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the next thing we need, uh, we've got the two catalysts and I like sticking them to the sides and it really doesn't matter where, uh, you know, for right now, we'll go ahead and put one catalyst here and put another catalyst uh, right here. And they get some mana pools. There we go. Mana pools go on top. And you can see through there the, the, the different types of catalysts. Here's where the optional stuff is. I like to dye them so that I know which catalyst is which. So that's the yellow catalyst and the magenta purple catalyst. I can never remember the names of the catalysts and at this point, I don't care. Uh, we do need the, the two Natura pylons. And so we'll slap those on there. Uh, you do need to have the glimmer wood here and the core there, but that's fine. You also need to pump some mana into here, which again is easily enough done. But with that in place, uh, next thing I like to do is set up this three by three area here. And this is where we put the Terra Steel Maker. So you make an X of the living rock with that and a centerpiece. And we need the Terra Steel agglomeration plate. And that needs a spark. Done. So that, that is in place. And this gives me a block uh, or an idea as to where things need to go. So let's just use some junk blocks. Hey, I've got junk blocks right here. And I'm going to put a junk block there and a junk block there just to give me some spacing, which tells me over here is where we're going to have the three by three of mana storage. 
And over here is where we're going to have the, the three by three of, of the power, or in this case, uh, the end of flames producing power. They go here. And then uh, we can get rid of this junk block and that junk block. And if we put, again, the little junk box down in the corners, that uh, sets up this area here for doing the enchanting. So I break out this section here like this. And then we need a plus sign in the middle. And that takes all of the obsidian. So put the obsidian there. Like that. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot, doot. So there's the obsidian uh, that takes the last lapis block in the center and then flowers. Uh, color wise, it really doesn't matter what the flowers are, but I like having them all the same in the center and then uh, on the outsides, different ones because different. So from the centerpiece, you go out three, one, two, three, and then you go out another three, and that needs to become dirt. No, that needs to become dirt <laughs> so that we can put a flower there and that's right on the border and then one two three there's another flower we can get rid of these junk blocks now and we'll just repeat that one two three place a flower one two three it's right next to it one two three and we need to get rid of that and make it dirt and you're, you're typically not going to have a border of wool but you know that's that's the way it goes uh, we need these six mana pylons to go on top and the easiest way I find is to find the top of the hitbox of the flowers and click on that done and you know this is formed correctly if you get that <laughs> that that means we've got ourselves a mana enchanting piece alrighty now junk blocks let's go ahead and set up a I will do the map the power um, over here first so junk blocks we'll go two rows not that one. There we go. We'll go two rows here like this. And it really doesn't matter what you use. We just want to segregate out this area. And here's where we need our pools. Where are the pools? There's the pools. Uh, we'll have a three by three of mana pools in here. And this is the battery storage of, of all the, the mana we're producing. A spark on each and every one of these pools because Sparks are better for transmitting power than, or power, mana than uh, spreaders are. And then I've got a dominant spark that goes in the center. And then we need uh, a elven spreader. And I typically only do an elven spreader. I don't go to the Gaia because there's no needed. You, you can do this just fine. Ah, we don't have an altar. <laughs> runic altar. <laughs> and the runic altar goes on top of that, and if you hit it with the the wand, you can see that it's the the spreader is highlighting that uh, runic altar, so that's fine. If you want a little bit extra speed, you can put a composite lens, and this lens here that I'm using is potency and velocity, and that will speed the stuff into the runic altar faster, and then. Uh, Sometimes I will use mana glass right here. Uh, other times in the pack, you might not actually be able to see the mana in the pools. And that's really annoying. I want to be able to look down and see what the, the mana is doing. So trapdoors work, work just fine. Uh, right in the middle here, we want a mana pool right there. Doink. That's going to be the, the main one that we're going to be using. And then over here, we can put down our last trapdoor and that's kind of our entrance way down underneath for for working on it later so we've got the end of flames here and let's uh plug that block up there go down some yeah hit it with the actual right tool and here's where we're going to set up the i went too high i want my dropper and we'll put it right they're facing up and then we need some junk blocks Let's come around and seal this off so that the items can't come out uh, we don't want to, that to happen at all and i'm going to put a junk block here this one technically doesn't need to be here but it doesn't matter uh, got our redstone comparator 
that goes facing into the dropper, we have a pool onto that uh, comparator. So it's getting the, the information from the pool and our other Elven spreader goes here and using your wand, point it into the pool. And here's where I also like to have another lens, potency and velocity, just to speed up the, the pushing in of mana. Not really necessary, not, not, not at all, but you know, it's nice to have. Uh, redstone, this will go ahead and tell it to not run too hot. Uh, it will shut off. There we turn that on. And so when this gets to, see that's uh, level 12. So when it gets to 12 fifteenths of a pool, it'll shut off. Now we need a hovering hourglass and I tend to put it on the opposite side and either 10 sand or one red sand, either one. Uh, hit it with the wand so it's locked and every 10 seconds it'll just tick. Now I like to have uh, two item frames and put one item frame here and I'm gonna say charcoal blocks and then the other item frame I put up on the top and we'll put here the blaze mesh there we go uh, that can go there and that's where we typically use mana glass or some other glass like that I'm gonna steal this one because I didn't have that in my list <laughs> we'll add that to the, the list of uh, things that need to be there and uh, this way it provides light. It also allows you to look down and see what's in there. And uh, that will work out very nicely. And it, as you heard the, the ticks every 10 seconds, it just pulses and sends that through. See? And uh, anything that's in there gets outputted. Now we do want a floating hopper hawk, or if you happen to have um, dirt underneath here, you could just have a regular hopper hawk sitting right here. Either way, doesn't matter. Uh, but we do want to use an infestation spore either on the floating hopper hawk or on the dirt below. That turns this into mycelium and slows down the, the hopper hawk. So it's not picking up uh, the items that's being spit out there as fast. Now, if you want, you can put a floating signolia right there, which will stop people with magnets from picking stuff up. But that's completely optional. That's up to you. Uh, we've got this uh, trap door. If you've got flights, you can just uh, go in and out. If you don't have flight, I would put two ladders right there to make it easier to get in and out. And uh, at that point, um, oh yes, we need some, some sparks. This center guy right here needs a spark and it needs a dominant so that it will, this guy and that center one for the, the runic altar will both grab all the mana it can. And then we need a mana, a spark here on the enchanter. So it'll get its stuff. And then a spark down here with a recessive. Uh, let's click that recessive on there. That way it'll give up mana to any pool that is either a dominant or a regular uh, sparked pool. And that will feed everything. And then, it, you know, that will power up your system pretty nicely. It's not the fastest of all methods, but it will constantly consistently tick. Uh, you go ahead and hit two blocks there and you can put a floating Rosa Arcana up here, or you can sit there and put a, a block of dirt right below it and plant the flower on top either way. And here's where this other thing, uh, just temporary thing. Uh, if I eat a few bit of this, I get some experience that's in this pack may not be in your pack that you're playing with. And the reason why I put it up that high, we put the wand over it. You can see it's bound to the, um, the, the spreader down below. Now, if you stand up onto this pool, it's taking the XP from the player and shoving it into the system down below. It's going into that mana, that, uh, mana spreader right down there, going into that pool, which is getting spread to all of these pools. It's really fun <laughs> and it works really well. Uh, so that, that works fantastic and boom, done. That is set up and that's a pretty simple, compact, most of what you need for Batania in one chunk. 
uh, it's a pretty simple little setup and it can look really good too. I, I, I really like making floating islands and so I went ahead and prettified this up. We've got a second island pouring some water around and you know we get a little bit of overflow but, but that's okay. Um, just making it look good and in this We've got everything that's necessary. We've got a pure daisy over here. Although, you know, I tend to break it if I'm not actively using it. Here's where we've got our petal apothecary with some water nearby to, to do what to, needs to be done. Uh, we've got the, the pools down there. They're completely full. And if we uh, come down here and take a quick gander, everything's in place, easily accessible. We've got some glimmering flowers to light things up. I can store that up. When this locks, uh, the hopper hawk will not be able to pick up anything. It'll get disabled by that redstone signal, but you can access it just fine. If, on the other hand, uh, it, it isn't uh, locked up, then you can just drop that uh, burnable items right here and the flowers will pick it up and then the hopper hawk will stick it into the, uh, the, the dropper down below. And it works. It works really, really well. Maybe not so nice to have the water pouring around, but, you know, you can do that. My bees are way down there. Oh well, but this is a fantastic little setup and it's easy to, to do and it shuts itself off. I love that. I think that's one of some of the best things about this. Anyway, and so now you have a, a way to set up these really tight, compact uh, Botania setups. There's only two spreaders and they tick. So that's why I'm, I'm only using two instead of lots. And you still have a huge amount of backup uh, power for, for enchanting all sorts of stuff and doing all sorts of things. It works great. Anyway, this has been Greg the Duck Farmer here talking a little bit about Batania. And thanks for watching.